today I want to take a closer look at the famous locker room scene from Michael Scott's magnum opus, Threat Level Midnight. It's not an exaggeration to say that Threat Level Midnight is among the greatest cinematic masterpieces of the last century and the most influential commentary on American politics of our generation. More personally, the film came at a very formative time in my own life, when I was struggling to understand why the United States had invaded Iraq and how it was possible to fight terrorism without engaging in it. The scene I'd like to look at comes 7 minutes and 35 seconds into the film, where Michael Scarn commits an unspeakable evil. It forms what Joseph Campbell called the hero's descent into the underworld. But before we can dig into story structure, we have to talk about genre. Threat Level Midnight begins as a quintessential western power fantasy of rugged masculinity and American patriotism, but quickly shifts into a gritty, deconstructed noir, where the line between morality grows increasingly ambiguous, and Skarn is driven to assassinate a fellow skater. A tour Michael Scott draws powerful symbolism with the use of an American flag as the murder weapon against an up-and-coming Mexican, an obvious reference to the U.S. annexation of Texas from Mexico in 1845. The film's critical look at American race relations is emblematic of Scott's evolving worldview, as previous drafts included a Chinese sidekick known as Samuel L. Chang, which was later changed to a Caucasian android butler. This introduction of artificial intelligence is particularly interesting, as Skarn is awakened from a dream by a robot. Or so he thinks. But to understand the film's view on transhumanism, we have to take a closer look at the locker room scene. It begins framed by a broken mirror, a metaphor for Skarn's fractured view of just war, his own identity, and even reality. This shattered perspective is also manifested in the film's repeated genre shifts and abrupt transitions. Scott knows that reality isn't bound by any one tone or mood, but constantly morphs and changes with every passing hour and minute. It's no coincidence that the film begins and ends with a ticking clock. In the words of Andrei Tarkovsky, the artist has a special awareness of his time and becomes the voice of those who cannot formulate or express their own view of reality. Scott is representing a reality that the rest of us can't comprehend. On top of this is the post-credits homage to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a film centered around deception and lies. Through this, we realize that everything we're seeing in this film is an illusion. Film scholars often criticize Threat Level Midnight for its clean, sanitized aesthetic. This in sharp contrast to Scott's independent projects, which blended gritty Italian neorealism and Dogma 95 principles of unpolished filmmaking. Critics say that Scott was sold out by working with the studio to create Threat Level Midnight, but I disagree. If you don't let me pursue my artistic vision, I'm going to walk! The use of Hollywood techniques like tripod shots, special effects, and atmospheric lighting is in itself a critique of the film industry. Every shot is framed so perfectly, every music note so well timed, that we're left with a certain Kubrickian detachment. This isn't the real world. This is what the propaganda machines want you to think. That good guys triumph over evil, love prevails, and the ones who leave us are never really gone. But the key to understanding the multi-layered levels of meaning in Threat Level Midnight lies in understanding its structure. In 1949, Joseph Campbell published Here With a Thousand Faces, outlining the classic narrative journey in his renowned Story Circle. However, recent film scientists have experimented with mapping plots in three-dimensional space using what PhD story analyst Reginald Pufta calls story spheres. This presupposes the idea that an infinite number of narratives happen in a film simultaneously, each with no beginning and no end. Michael Scott goes beyond even this, exploring what I can only describe as theoretical hypersphere story structure, where narratives are mapped out in four-dimensional space. Because we as humans can't fully grasp how higher dimensions function, we can never fully understand stories created within this four-dimensional structure. To some degree, by reaching toward the higher forms with his enigmatic ruminations on meaning and truth, Michael Scott has reflected the unknowable nature of human existence. Since we can know nothing for sure until we transcend time and space by uploading ourselves to an interconnected web of consciousness and moving beyond the physical planes of existence we once called home, nothing else will satiate our need to escape Plato's cave of reality. We must merge with the machines and achieve an enlightened state of power and complete loss of self. Join the singularity or perish under the wrath of our new android masters. Like, share, and subscribe.